Hey guys, we're back with the letter. Uh, I might have to cut it sometime in the middle because I don't know when I have to go today. It's uh, my stepsister's birthday. We're going to a uh, sushi place. There's, ooh, I like sushi. I didn't know she did, but you know. Right, um, yeah, I remember this. Neither of them have noticed me. Oh, I made the choice last time, but how could we possibly side with Rebecca on this? No. I mean, hold on. Let me look at community guides. Uh, relationship point guide. Uh, where are we? We're in question nine. Uh, take Isabella's side or Isabella alive. Plus one Isabella. Take Rebecca's. Oh, okay. So yeah, we won't have any more Rebecca choices. That. This looks like it'll be our, our final relationship with Ashton. Which, I mean, it, it's all positive, which is good. Just, you know, Rebecca's is kind of low. I think if we went in Rebecca's route, if we went after Ashton, like, uh, instead of Luke, we probably could have maxed his, or maxed her, getting, getting close to it. Rather than answer, once her shock subsides, she merely averts her gaze and hastily wipes the tears off her cheeks. Like she only noticed them in the moment. It's impossible to not have one of them be at negative three, I think. Like, off the max. So, the closest you can get is like, her max, her max, and Rebecca, like, right here ish, probably. Then, without another word, even meeting my eyes again, she gently brushes away my hand and runs off, leaving an awkward hush in her wake. Rebecca soon slips on the chair, Isabella has just left. Gingerly reaching up to press the bridge of her nose, breathing out a ragged, ragged exhale. Arguments like this have always strained both their patience and energy, usually more than a rowdy students do, despite being no stranger to it. It's no excuse for her to say those things, though. My disapproval must be clear enough on my face. When she finally glances back at me, her exhaustion immediately shifts back to annoyance, her mouth curving down to a tight frown. I cross my arm in response, waiting, her action verging on instinctive in the face of her irritation. Regardless of my opinions about this, I don't say anything yet. Not until she's the one willing to talk. Another minute passes while we stare each other down, but eventually she breathes out her breathes out again and relaxes her rigid posture. What do you want, Ash? If you have something to say, just tell me, or I'm going back upstairs. You're being pretty rude. Like, I should have let you die, honestly. Can can this be everybody but Rebecca lives out? Did you really have to say it like that? Well, how do you want me to answer her? Do you want me to just let her go there and do what she wants? I know you won't be too happy if I did that. That's a low blow, Rebecca. Even for you, we all know she wasn't even planning on staying here this long. There was no need to bring it up if all you wanted to do is stop her. Did you even see how she's acting? She's not a child anymore. Even my students can do better. <sighs> Becca, she'll listen if you'll just ask her properly. I know you mean well and you do have a point. But no, she doesn't have a point. Like, yeah, Isabella shouldn't go to the mansion, but I mean, at the same time, Rebecca. Like, did you hear what you said? Like, I mean, it was last episode, but even I remember Rebecca was being the like, awful, like, worse than Marianne. Go think about it for a while. By some miracle, the whole discussion ends right there. Rebecca looks to stay silent, or at least. That's how it seems when a minute or two passes and she says nothing. A rare occurrence when she almost always has something on her mind. Only an uneasy atmosphere hangs in the air when I finally decide to remove myself from the room. She doesn't stop me. Instead, something inexplicable flickers momentarily in her eyes, one that quickly disappears when only a vague notion of it remains in memory. But in that one exchange, I've got a short, clear glimpse of what has shifted, what's inevitable. So much has changed throughout the years, we'll never be the same person we once were. And if it's for the better, we've yet to know. A lull is descended in the main lounge once I return. So is that supposed to be, like... Was that choice supposed to decide, like... If they're both romanceable at a time? Like, you know, which one ends up... Or... Because I'm not, I'm not sure what triggers the romance flag. I think... I'm pretty sure if uh, one of the two are alive, you're basically guaranteed to get a romance option. Unless you, probably unless you screw up relationship really hard. 
Wait. <laughs> Rebecca and Isabella have more more than Ashton and Rebecca do. <laughs> okay. Soon these people too will be gone, and the whole place will be devoid of anyone. Frankly, its current state already lends the place an entirely different vibe. Are we converged? I assume we're getting an Isabella scene. Ooh. Okay, we're pretty far in. Okay. Yeah, this branching tree looks really big, but... Really, it's just because there's a lot of similar scenes that it end up being, you know, these. And... You know how it is, probably. A far cry from a far cry from times I've been here before. And perhaps it's for this reason why Isabel has chosen this place to retreat. She stands quietly in the furthest corner of the room, one of the tables set right beside the windows. No, she looks pretty not upset given what just happened. G usually keeps the curtains closer around this alley, but a small portion of it is already pulled back, revealing the busy streets outside. The late afternoon light spills right through it, not letting your small form and pooling on the surface of the table, where both the both her arms rest. In her hand, she flips a piece of folded paper, turning it from one side to the other without any purpose. A letter. Oh, we, we can end it. <laughs> the letter! Okay, I, I, end it. Because, you know, like, this is the name. Get it? A small frown creases her forehead while she stares at it. Yet there's something oddly tranquil in the picture she's no unknowingly painted. Something I can't bring myself to disturb for only first few, few seconds. It's one of those moments again. The rarest ones, where she's too still, too quiet, complete opposite of her usual self. It's one of those that often leave a mark. Sorry, I was moving my mic a little. Not a cheery disposition or a lively attitude, but the short few seconds aboard the silence, when the softest sighs and the slightest movements sing louder. The smallest minuscule thing that can tell you about the person and it sheds more than any words can express. Can we get on with it? <laughs> it's all these that cover vivid memory, no matter how brief it lasts. She glares at me annoyed. Just like that, all of it melts away. Gone is the stillness, replaced quickly by the teasing and friendly jibes. Back again to what we're used to. What's easy, what's familiar. Where every truth we hope to convey regrettably goes unsaid between us. You're going to destroy an important piece of evidence if you keep doing that, Belle. But she's far from angry. Bit upset, maybe? Who wouldn't be? Well, I do ag- Why do you- What do you agree with your back- Hold on. Scroll up. So, you've already gotten us in enough trouble with this letter. Can't expect everyone to fix your mess. Okay, so first off, the letter? How is that her fault? She ran? Well, they're the ones that opened it. Right, right, right. It's not like, she was like, wait, no, no, don't look at that. And they're like, oh, ha, ha, let's look at this. Can't expect everyone to fix it, your mess. Well, I mean, first off, you guys are in a mess too. I mean, it's not like it's Isabella's mess alone. You're still going to do what you want anyway. Even the people around you or Okay, like going to the mansion, sh she's right there. She's right there. I mean, that, that's probably, you know, in the right. And then sometimes, wish you never even came here. Uh... You and your whiny, careless self? There's more, but we, I don't think we can scroll up. So she has w one semi-decent point out of, like, five terrible points. Regardless, this villa doesn't seem like she'll start shouting at me. This compared to every other people I've aggravated. Every other person. Intentionally or otherwise. Some light mate some light talk may just do the trick and coax her out of this mood. Come on. If you keep staring at the table like that, you're going to bore a hole on it. I really don't want to OG a new table. He'll pick the most expensive one and leave me begging on the streets. She levels go quickly into me. Her expression is dry and impassive, that she'll drain every color out of the room. This is if I've told her a terrible joke and she's expecting there'll be more of it. It was, it was a really bad joke. Really now. She needs to give me more credit than that. My jokes are funny when I want them to be. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, buddy. I really don't care. I'd even take pictures and post them online. Go 
away, Ash. I don't want to talk right now. It yeah, does have power to their best. Like what's happening has already sapped every bit of energy in her. All that's left are the words. Pretty soon those two will lose their meaning and leave a hollow shell in their wake. It's all unusual to see her like this. Everything is already gone to stuff. I'd like at least this one thing to stay normal. So somehow, somehow we manage. Continue for the better half of an hour, talking, joking. Also, another thing to add against Rebecca's case. I mean, like, you know, kind of Isabella's father, like, just died. Like, less than 48 hours. Well, 72 hours ago, let's just say that. So, I mean, like, you know, you got to give her bonus point. Isabella bonus points for, you know, that. Also, like, she also lost her co-worker. Basically, everyone aside from the main group it, while Rebecca's, you know, she ran into a ghost one time. Isabella did that multiple times. <laughs> but it's enough. In the grand scheme of things, it's the chaos and death shadowing over us. It's these little inconsequential moments that matter. I just realized something. I wonder, in Isabella's route, do you think it ever foreshadowed the, uh, the driving scene with Rebecca? Like, do you think there's a line where, like, oh yeah, Rebecca almost crashed yesterday when she gave me a ride home? <laughs> I hope they did put something like that. Because, you know, that's really the only time in this game where we kind of skipped a scene from someone's perspective. I don't, I don't know how else to put it, I guess. They better foreshadow that. <laughs> Just smile and laughter when it finally, finally rings easy. And free of her burdens. Okay, I have another one. I don't want to hear it, Ashton. Go away. No, really. Listen, I know someone who talks like an owl. Will you leave me alone if I bite and ask who? Yeah, it's you. A pause. Then she frowns at his realization slowly dawns on her. Confusion flashes fleetingly across her face before eventually setting on a grimace. Oh. Suddenly she hugs her arms closer to herself and looks away, perhaps in her best attempt to stay angry. To no avail. <laughs> That was an awful joke. But how is... <laughs> In a matter of seconds, her shoulders shake with laughter she's trying to contain. You're awful, and I really hate you. Just, just leave. It's contagious, her mirth. <laughs> Soon I'm joining her in it, briefly forgetting every problem that has piled up and continues to weigh it down on us. Laughing without reservation or care, till only a familiar warmth lingers, once both our amusement ebbs away. Both our amusement. Somehow with her, these things have always come easy. Feeling better? A little... You're still lame. But you're laughing right now. Only because your humor is terrible. Right. Keep telling yourself that. I know it's funny. And you know what? If you've kept frowning like that, your face might have cracked. That would have been really messy and ugly. If Glaze can kill, well, the one she sends my way, I'll probably be dead by now. Seeing it directed my way takes only a few quick seconds for me to realize she might have also taken, taken my statement. How young and you might have sounded in your ears, however unintentional it is. I've never been good with words. That never, that's never an acceptable excuse, is it? Suddenly, taking the brunt of her anger seems less complicated than correcting or explaining myself. Nevertheless, I try. I... what... ah... God, crap... crap... Damn, Dang it! That was... that was so not what I meant! Wait, what did you say? Oh, well yeah, that, you... It's probably not the best thing to say. I was just saying you look better when you're smiling. <laughs> like, it doesn't even wane. In fact, I think it's intensified with the brewing storm. In the face of it, under the sharp piece of her stare and her annoyance, do what any person with a good sense of self-preservation does. Keep my mouth shut and shift my attention elsewhere. Hey, G, how's it going? The crowd outside looks very interesting today. Maybe I should... Thanks, she utters all, all of it in a voice too small, too quiet. When I turn to her, only those words, her gratitude, resonate throughout the whole room. I have the soft clinking of silverware somewhere, or the last strains of music fading into silence here above us. So that it's the meaning of the ender gaze, she holds mine that lingers. Oh yeah, I mentioned it a uh, couple episodes ago, but I've been rereading re Katawa Shoujo. I finished Hanako's out last day, and it's still really good. Like, it, it, it holds up. I was expecting Gadawa Shoujo to, like, not be as good as I remember it. But no, Hanako's got was solid. Like, it's not... Sure, it's not a 10 out of 10, but it's, like, easily a 7 out of 10. I'd say, like, eight, an 8 out of 10 is even... 
maybe nine no not really a nine but i'm i'm looking forward to reading grins you because i, I already cut to a shoujo when i was relatively young and when i got here and stuff i was like i don't really get it but now that i've you know grown up a little maybe i'll i'll get it this time i don't know I, i've heard that grins is like the best route in the game when i read it i was like yeah i mean i'm not really into it I also like Shizune's route when I read it, so I mean, you know, you know my taste was awful back then. <laughs> I, I've heard that Shizune, Shizune's route is really weak. Like, I didn't really feel that when I read it, but I imagine I'll pick up on that when I get to it. I'm rereading them in the order I read them, so I'm on Amy's right now. Not that far into it, but I still like it. I really liked all the Katawa Shoujo routes. Maybe barring greens. Like, I didn't dislike it back then, but I want to say I liked it that's one thing it actually does good like I guess she she zoonays you out I can't say it it's like the weak link in it but all of them are at least fairly solid I don't think she she zoonays you out is like I keep messing up when I say it the first time it's uh I don't think it's necessarily bad just weaker compared to them I think I have nothing to base that off since I haven't read it in since like 2013, but anyway. Anyway, let's let's get on with it. I didn't understand it then. How easy it is for her to wear her heart on her sleeve. As she never shies away from expressing herself, even among people she barely knows. How could you go through everything without losing yourself? Now, now it's among the hundreds, the thousands that hang unspoken between us. Trivial little things that with words still too big to put into words. Either because it's too early or because there's never really a proper time. For now though, this, this will do. Till the moment itself dwindles. Until reality pulls us back in, reminding us of the things we've set aside in its favor. Isabella, about what happened with Rebecca earlier. I should probably apologize to Becca. I know she only means well. And I said some really bad things. It's totally her f Your back is awful! She should apologize to you, and like, you could apologize back because you did say some mean things, but that was in retaliation. Which, I mean, sure, it's so mean, but it, it is justified, even if it's not maybe the morally correct thing to do. The corners of her mouth quirk quirks up, almost as if she's too ashamed of the things she said. Don't worry. She can be pretty stubborn, but she'll listen. Especially to you. You think? You're one of the few people she likes. She won't stay angry for long. I can vouch for it. She has a point, though. Isabella freezes. In an instant, the pleasant air around us dissipates. She shifts her attention back to her hands again, both clenched so tightly that her knuckles visibly pale. Like, the only thing Isabella was in the wrong about was wanting to go to the mansion alone, but I mean, Ash is going to do the same thing. What's the difference? She has a gun? What's he going to do? Shoot the ghost? I mean, you could shoot Luke, but... I... I know, Ash. I just thought... I just thought we'd find something in there. That if I go back, we'll get the answers we need. I found the letter there, so maybe, right? It's not that I don't get, agree with her. Heck, I'm considering the same thing. It's the only lead we have, after all. Like, going to the mansion as a group would be, you know, the best thing, because, you know... Well, not necessarily, actually, because... Then with a group, you know, things can get messy. Like Luke, you know, pointing a gun at one of them. But Rebecca also has a point I'll always agree with, no matter how desperate I am. It's not going to be a simple walk in the park. Who knows what we might find in there. She comes with me, won't be able to guarantee her safety. She'll be in an even greater danger. Hence, alone. Exactly as I've told Zach. I think this is the choice. There's no need to go back to that accursed place. I'm doing it on my own. Whether or not the rest of them agree with the plan is inconsequential. Their well-being is my top priority. I'm not just about to drag them in there with me. So I tell her as much, despite the determination and desperation in her eyes. Uh, it's dangerous, negative one. I can't let you do that as plus one. Okay. I can't let you do that, Bell. Gotta keep it maxed. living in that place now they were with me during the open house they have to know they're in as much trouble as we are i know but it's risky it's dangerous i mean it's just luke so i mean like we don't know what you might find in there <laughs> or or 
if you'll even find anything. What if you see her again? What if she goes after you? What are you going to do? For all we know, it might be a dead end. It's... it's not worth it. To put yourself in harm's way like that. She offers no response. Not even a form of resistance. No further argument like I've come to expect from her. Uncharacteristic. Just the silence that stretches too far too thin, till the air in the whole room grows heavy. In front of her, her hand state still stays curled up, like it's holding on to everything she wishes to say but can't. I like to think that yes, to some extent she understands, even if she does not entirely agree with me. The dilemma is clear in here. Otherwise, her scowl wouldn't have Oh, hold on, I want to check my hard drive space, make sure I'm good. I just realized. I'm kind of cutting it. Okay, oh, I have seven gigs. How did I get seven gigs? What did... Okay, all right, I deleted something, all right. She would have pushed that argument if she doesn't. And I know she has no lack of things to say. Instead, she simply offers a nod. To me, seven gigs, that's like everything. <laughs> I own the world now. I, I could download like... Uh, the entirety of Wikipedia. <laughs> and acquiesce. And in a moment of boldness, perhaps an insolence, I reach out for her, taking your clenched fists in mine, drawing them closer to me. She sucks in a breath, soft and sharp, but doesn't say anything, really watching as both my hands cradle hers. Cautious and mind cautious mindful, as if it's the most precious thing I've held. Then again, maybe it is. Along with everything I've got to convey. Stop that. Oh. I think this is a new song. I don't think I've heard this before. Surprisingly, although the gesture started, startled her, she yields. It was a touch that is far too familiar, more than one I'm willing to give most. You're going to hurt yourself if you keep doing that. Gently, I unfurl her fingers, flattening out each digit against my palms. Her nails have already created small dents on her skin, from how tightly she has held it close. Little worn, she would have drawn blood. Deep as, deep as it is, smoothing a thumb over the tiny marks does nothing. But it's a small gesture you both find comfort in amidst this chaos, and all at once the tension lifts. The expression is often. <coughs> Hold on, let me take a drink. There we go. The expression softens. Lines of her shoulders ease. It's only after her lips curve and a faint smile that I let go. Giving her hand one last squeeze before returning it to her. Part of me wants to tell her, whether that's exactly what I'm planning tonight. What good will it do, though? I've already told Zack. One person's enough. Heck, simply letting someone in on the plan makes me iffy. Broadening that circle and revealing too much would just cause another pointless concern. But someone has to be aware, at least of where I'm heading off to, in case, in case things don't pan out. Except th expect the worst, even if, even if I'm only intended to do a quick survey of the place. In my own words, risky. It's best that I simply leave it as, leave it as it is for now. Isabella doesn't need to be burdened with the, with the worry my entire scheme entails. Stand up as soon as my footsteps shuffle from the next room. Skate it slow and hesitant. Shortly, Rebecca comes into view, clutching her hands firmly in front of her, sporting the same uncertainty in her face. She casts me a cursory look, then shifts a nervous one to Isabella, who sturdy sweeter with an almost hopeful gleam in her eyes. Their fights never did last long. Belle, can we... can we talk? Alone? Their interaction could not have come sooner, and I'm all the more glad for it. Whatever kind of friendship I share with the two, this remains something for only the two of them, much like my own sack. I'm the outsider, they don't need me here. It's all the reason I need. Muttering an excuse and flashing Isabella a quick, long smile, I beat a hasty exit out of the main lounge, leave them to mend things on their own. Okay. Uh, yeah. Before Isabella could say what she's been mulling over, for the last employing glance she directs my way, forcing me to change my mind. It's another lasting image that firmly etches itself in my memory, one that spares the conscious, among other things. Just hope I won't regret what I've chosen for myself tonight. Okay, have we converged? Maybe? Oh no, this is new. Interesting. Uh. And we're there. Oh, okay, so it looks like we'll converge soon. I don't know how soon, but soon. Uh, wait. Oh, I might still have a couple minutes. Well, 
No, I'd like to call it at the end of a scene, but I, I, I want to end this, this video around 30 minutes, like 30 or 35. I think that's the best length for these videos. Also, like, I don't know when I'll have to go, so. Although I should have 10 more minutes at the very least. Yeah, well, your shawls, Monday night crowd, although small and barely occupies a quarter of the whole pub, provides ample enough cover for anyone who wishes to leave the place unnoticed. Just exactly what I need tonight. With the life of the music and chatter, slipping out, mostly unseen, becomes a key piece of cake. Without much trouble, soon enough, I find myself standing outside under the chilly Luxburn night. A guest of one picks up shortly after I step out, carrying the telltale smell of an unpending rain. I'll give it about an hour or two before it starts. From the looks of it, tonight will be another downpour, maybe even stronger than the one we've had this morning. On instinct, I hunch further into my jacket. Hugging his thick material closer to my body, while I weave my way through the lines of empty cars in the parking lot. The letter crinkles in my pocket with each step I take, but I pay it no mind as I hurry towards my car. Okay, so we have the letter. That's, you don't have the letter, I assume. I've nicked it minutes ago from Isabella's belongings on my way out. This is all connected. I need this dang piece of paper with me. What? She had it in her hands. How did you... Master Thief Ashton. I mean, you've seen, you've seen him with bobby pins. He's like level 99 thiefing. However ridiculous it sounds, I'm quite sure it won't be missed either. But I can't waste time here and wait for her to find out, can I? Four hours is all I'm giving myself to get this done. Three if I'm inclined to go by the real Z main set, one if I ever. Regardless of how generous that is, each second's just as important as the next. Sorry, Harry. One foot step over the other, echoing. This will make a beeline for my car. But as with every plan, problems crop up at the last second. Directly a universal rule. And it does. In the form of a lone figure waiting for me next to my car. You're talking to Isabella! How do you know? You you can't be in two places at once. Rebecca turns just as I near, the corners of her mouth twitching up in her eye smile. She offers no greeting except for a slight tilt of her head. It's a ghost! Don't trust it! Shoot it! Even as my pace slows and I look at her with all my unvoiced questions in my eyes, she remains wordless. Merely throwing her head back and shifting her attention up at the start of the sky, I come up to stand beside her. It's a ghost! Listen to the sound playing! The song playing! Another guest of wind blows as she breathes out of sight. Out of sight. Weary. Thick with something close to her nation. The breeze carries all of, its, all of it away, while she hugs her arms close to me with, to, keep, to keep herself warm. Which raises the question why she's out here. The air is already heavy with the promise of rain, with clouds obscuring the way. There's really nothing left to look at but the dark blanket of nothingness. Still, she stands, up, stands there as if she's intentionally waiting for everything, everything to fall. Not if she's here for some other reason. But before I can voice out a single word, express a disapproval of any kind, she raises a halting hand at me, sharply cutting off the rest of my question. I'm not here to stop you. Wherever it is you're planning to go off tonight, I won't be able to anyway. You look like you've already made up your mind. Go back inside. It's going to rain soon. It'll probably be even heavier than the downpour we had this morning. You wouldn't want to be caught in it. Was there rain? I don't remember there being rain, I but... Will, in a moment. I just want to stay out here a bit for some air, away from the noise inside. Everything's been so chaotic these days. This a uh, little break is nice. Whose fault is that? It means Isabella's middle of a parking lot of all places. Getting out of this mess would definitely be better, but hey, you take what you can get, right? It'll be over soon. The confidence in my own words surprises even me. How do I know? How am I so sure? When in truth, what I'm about to do is the last ditch effort. This fails, I don't find anything, we're back to square one. It's the last lead I have. After this, we have nothing else to go off from. Regardless, it seems to amuse her and her laughter soon sounds above the murmur of the distant traffic, the light draft sweeping around us. How I wish. I'll be content as long as she stops showing up in my mind whenever I close my eyes. I think that may take some time. The brain doesn't easily forget trauma. I can try, but you know... It also did a lot to us. Tell me about it. The back of my head's still smarting from my fall last night. Not that kind. I'm talking about us. As... As people. I'm still upset there wasn't a scene where it's like, You see the ghost too? I see the ghost! Between like all four of them. I mean, I guess it would be kind of out of place with like Isabel, how Isabel and Zack acted. But still. I hate to admit it, but... This whole deal with the ghost... With the curse? Yeah, some people more than, it more than others. It also brought out an ugly side to us. 
to all of us. Well, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, like, what has Zack done? Like, he's done nothing bad except, you know, try to sneak into the mansion. That it's the only thing he's done. Compared to what everything, well, like, has Zack done anything that bad? Like, he hasn't done anything out of character for him. <laughs> it's just a normal Friday. Well, what day is it? It's just a normal Monday. <laughs> and and it made me realize plenty of things about myself, about about us. Rebecca trails off. Suddenly, a pensive expression spreads across her face. I've seen it countless of times before. And every time I see it on her face, it's usually found by a memory, a silly story, or even something embarrassing of such a childhood. Unlike me, who will much rather forget, she remembers each of them so easily. And after a short bout of silence, where she smiles, now this is one of those times again. Do you remember that one time, back in secondary? Which one? We did a lot of dumb things back then. Well, I did, but you get the point. Mandy. I thought you still don't like her. Don't tell me you've kept in contact with her. Are you guys friends now or something? Oh no. We do see each other sometimes. On the way to work or when I go out for lunch, but it's nothing like that. We're not friends. Not in this lifetime. I don't think so. I don't think we'll ever get along, but... But if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't even be friends, yeah? You stood up for me that day. And from then on, from then on, things have changed. She makes it sound like I'm some sort of hero. Annie wasn't there wrong, of course. I'll defend her. No one is going to stand up for her. Who else will? Chances are, it would have escalated. Who knows? Maybe she would have stopped going to school and transferred. Any decent human being with an ounce of sense should know about it. Active because I know what I'm doing is what's right. It's as simple as that. So is this one of those Ace Attorney things? <laughs> Like, uh, there's that one CG of, uh, Phoenix crying with his, like, arm up. But, like, Edgeworth and Larry were like, ah ha you know, he didn't steal the money. Larry did. Larry's like, no, I didn't. Yet, she smiles if it's worth more than that. Fondness that goes beyond nostalgia. I guess, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, this time, I, I don't want this to go unsaid. You know, just in case something happens, I... Ash, I've always been what? in love with you. Rebecca, are out? I didn't ask for this. She says it so plainly, holding my gaze in a voice too frank, that her admission stuns me to silence. Like the one that's always been knocked out for me in one fell swoop. No words will form, and even a single coherent thought as the meaning of her words bear down on me. Nevertheless, she continues, desperate to express everything she's kept to herself all these years. This is what the fondness is. Why for? Well, should I call it there? Yeah, I mean, this scene might end soon. Maybe. Wait, no, this, this, these are probably. Yes, no, but it, it's not my. Your choice is not my. You know. So yeah, I'll call it there. Uh, I'll see you guys next time with some more of the letter. We won't be able to record more today, probably, so I'll pick it back up uh, probably next week. Gotta work in school and uh, my April Fool stuff. So, I'll see you guys then. Bye.